60 football group. Obviously, they've got multiple clubs, right? So in terms of ownership stakes, um, they split their clubs into two um, portfolios. So one that they call their core business and then the rest that they call their supporting business. Mm. And their core business is Manchester City, where they've got 100% control, Melbourne City, 100% control, and New York City, which they control 80%, and then the New York um, Enterprises controls the other 20%. Mm. Then in their supporting um, business, they've got a number of clubs spread across the globe, Girona, um, Montevideo, um, Yokohama, um, Mumbai City, Le Mau, um, Trois, Palmeiro, and Bihar, and then the club in China, which I believe has just changed its name, uh, Sonshu, to, to something else in recent weeks, actually. Mm. So I've got, forgive me, I don't know the name off the top of my head on that one. Um, but again, a lot of these um, controlling stakes, um, they're in partnership with something or someone, whether that's um, state backed or big businesses that also operate with some of their um, core sponsors that operate throughout the brands, etc. Um, so let me just bring, I'm just going to open up another document. So I've done a specific detail yeah. on City Football Group and its business operations. Mm. So um, obviously, we know that City, um, up until a couple of years ago, um, was. 10% owned by CMC, which is Chinese Media Capital, right? which is a um, pretty much a, a conglomerate which is run by the Chinese state, as in most of the yeah. big companies are. Um, but CMC also had a, a company that they partnered up with, um, which was called Ubtech, and Ubtech was an AI partner. And then I, through Ubtech, they managed to, to get into... Um, Mumbai City because they introduced them over to there as a partner and then City um, managed to take a um, controlling stake of that club, etc. Um, they've also, we know that they own 18% by Silver Lake, right? And Silver Lake are um, uh, an investment technology firm, mm. um, but they've got assets in, in themselves around about £80 billion pound, and a portfolio of companies that includes like Endeavor, Fanatics, um, Madison Square Gardens. Um, then when you open up Madison Square Gardens, that's linked to the owners of Aston Villa and other clubs, et cetera, and themselves. Mm. They um, massive investment in Expedia, and Expedia obviously a big sponsor of Liverpool. Um, and then the, the one I suppose raises the most eyebrows is Silver Lake's investment into the A-Leagues in Australia. So they have got 33% stake into the A-Leagues themselves. And yet, as a group, they're part of the CEFG group that own 100% of Melbourne City. Mm. So is there you know, a conflict of interest there? To what extent? Okay, it's um, very hard to pinpoint. But from the outside, it, it does look a little bit suspect. Mm. Um and, and that's where some of their partners are intertwined. And obviously, we're not going into this, but and obviously the charges related to City that are on the table at the moment, um, you know, it's through their connections with other clubs and other partners that these charges are, have been levelled at them. Mm. For what it's worth, I think they will get away with it 100%. I don't think they're going to be able to prove that anything sticks with Ma uh, Manchester City. You know, because, you know, when it comes to those inflated policies or values, etc. You're questioning the high level people that are behind these companies yeah. um, and you're questioning their judgment. Mm -hmm. And to actually sit on stand and question these people, so many of them as well. It's not going to be just one or two people. There's going to be multiple companies. You know, we're talking 20, 30, 40, 50 companies mm -hmm. with high level people that have got influence across the globe. You just think, yeah, ain't going to stick for me. I think they will come to a compromise and you get a slap on the wrist with a big fine, maybe huge points deduction for one season, but it ain't going to be relegated to tier two or anything like that. That's not veering off, though, track, but that's just looking at the, the some of the partnerships that are behind City Football Group. Um, the other one, which is quite an interesting one, is they use SAP. Now, SAP themselves are a German-based technology and the owners of SAP actually own Hoffenheim, um, the actual football club um, yeah. in Bundesliga, etc. Um, now, again, through Silver Lake, <clears throat> if you look at one of their partners, excuse me, Silver Lake also fund uh, a startup called Sapphire Sports, 
-hmm. And then Sapphire Sports also invest heavily in SAP. Now, SAP are they investing back into Manchester City. Yeah. And they've got this magical roundabout, which is going on. Um, but because there's a couple of layers in there, it's very hard to pinpoint mm. the actual level of influence, etc. Is it just a way of moving money around um, in order to show that they meet FFP? Mm. Or is there just uh, is it just a friend's game? You know, my business scratches your back, and in return for giving me this contract, which is outside of football, we can get you in the football door, and you can do this, you can get your product associated with this football club, this chain of football clubs, etc., so, you know, I don't think it's always skullduggery. I do think there's, there's something to do with, like, business. These are business people, right? And they're just trying to maximise their business interests as well. Yeah.